Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan and today we're going to be talking about all of the latest NHL trade rumors surrounding Jacob Chikrin, Ben Sherratt, JT Miller, and even more surrounding Evander Kane. The latest updates on him as we get close, closer to him potentially signing with an NHL team. Now there is a lot to talk about and most of it comes from the recent 32 Thoughts podcast by Elliot Freeman and Jeff Merrick. A lot of juicy information there that I wanted to talk about, but what are the latest NHL trade rumors? and what is the latest news across the league. Watch till the end for all of the updates and all of the trade rumors and make sure you hit that subscribe button if you are new. 55% of the people that are watching are not subscribed. If you like hockey, this channel is the place to be. Now the player I first want to talk about in today's video is a player that I'm honestly the most interested in in terms of his place in the trade market right now. I mean we all expected him to be traded at the trade deadline this year but he honestly could get moved a lot sooner than we all expected and that is Ben Sherratt of the Montreal Canadiens. Now, in my opinion, Ben Sherratt is fascinating because of the value that he can have on the market. He's at a $3.5 million cap hit at 30 years old. He was a fantastic defenseman for the Habs in their playoff run last year, being a consistent and sturdy, reliable defenseman. But so far this year, just like the rest of the Canadians, Ben Sherratt has not been nearly as good and has been pretty detrimental on their defense, not really being all too consistent and having some major speed problems, but there has been a lot of interest surrounding Ben Sherratt because of that playoff play, and it looks like a lot of teams in the playoff race are hoping that he can get back to that level, and from Elliot Freeman on the 32 Thoughts podcast, he said this about the Ben Sherratt trade rumors. I think that St. Louis has been around there. I think Florida has been around there as well. I think that's a player Calgary is also interested in, so we get three teams there name-bombed by Elliot Freeman that will be in the conversation. Not really too many surprising candidates there. We knew that Florida was already interested in him. Same thing with St. Louis. But Calgary being interested is kind of a new revelation. They're a team that we also do expect to make some big moves at the trade deadline. But Ben Sherratt could be a huge one added to that defense. But Elliot Freeman continues to talk about this situation and also mentions one other team in the conversation for Ben Sherratt. And this is where it truly starts to get interesting to me. Elliot Freeman said this. The other team I do wonder about is Toronto. The reason that I mentioned Toronto specifically is that I believe when Ben Schrott was a UFA and when he signed in Montreal, Toronto was in there and they just couldn't make it work. Then he goes on to say, but they liked him, he was interested in them, and he is a local guy. So, a very interesting couple of quotes there from Elliot Freeman, alluding to potentially some big Montreal-Toronto interest in a trade. We got a little bit of chatter a couple days ago about a Toronto and Montreal deal for Ben Chirot, but Elliot Freeman's putting it out there and putting some actual interest out there too. Again, saying that when Ben Chirot was a free agent, Toronto was one of the last teams in the mix and could circle back to a situation like that. Now, to me, when it comes to Toronto, having Ben Chirot on that defense would certainly be a big move. But at the same time, on that defense in the playoffs, I can see where they're kind of coming from. So far this year, he hasn't been good whatsoever, and I wouldn't spend a first-round pick on him, but for Toronto, playoff success is all that matters right now, and Ben Sherratt has proved to put that on his resume in the past. Now, to me, the most interesting part about this Ben Sherratt discussion is the price that the Canadians are going to ask for, because in my opinion, the number one thing they're going to look for is a first-round pick, and it might only be a first-round pick for Ben Sherratt at the end of the day, but I could also see some flexibility, whether it be for a team like Florida to potentially get around that. Maybe a second round pick and a good prospect could be what Montreal looks for. Maybe it's a second round pick and like uh, and, and, and potentially a Justin Sordiff for Ben Sherratt. Maybe that is potentially what the Canadians could maybe ask for and potentially accept, but at the same time, I feel like Ben Sherratt could also get maybe even more than that. If it is a second rounder, maybe it's a second and a fourth and a prospect as good as Sordiff. Sort of. I feel like for the Canadians, there could be a lot of flexibility, but at the end of the day, the first round pick is what's most likely going to come back for the Canadians in this 2022 draft. But now I want to quickly talk about Jacob Chikrin, who's been all over trade rumors over the past few days. He's a guy that it really feels like will likely be traded before we get into the real meat and potatoes of the trade deadline. I could definitely see him being dealt in the next couple of weeks, and it feels like, again, a lot of progress has been made on that front. Now, one of the big things that was discussed a few days ago was a reported trade price for Jacob Chikrin, and it came from Jeff Merrick on Sportsnet, who said this about what it would take to potentially trade 
trade for Chikorin. You're probably looking at a Spencer Knight and Tallendell first round pick. It sounds like a lot, and it is, but that's going to be the price for Chikorin. And personally, for me, going back to that that trade price, I mean, for the Florida Panthers, obviously Chikorin would be such a great defenseman and a low cap pit, and that's great to have. But those are three fundamental pieces. I mean, Anton Lindell especially would be so, so tough to lose. But at the same time, if it is what Arizona's price is, it's going to make the markets a lot less saturated. And it could maybe feed us into maybe a Jack Eichel situation where the first team to give up what the team wants, what Arizona in this case wants, will be the team to get them. But at this point, it's likely that we haven't seen any teams actually giving up this price yet. And it's for sure that Florida hasn't given it up either. I don't think they're going to want to get rid of Antel and Dell Spencer Knight and a first round pick too easily, which is why I don't think we've seen a trade up to this point. Now, another thing that Jeff Merrick talked about a few days ago was also the New York Rangers involvement in a Chickering trade. Now, we know a lot of other teams are involved, like the Blue Jackets, the Ducks, the Kings, the Bruins. A lot of teams are in on Chickering as they should be, but the Rangers are, in my opinion, one of the most interesting teams out there just because of how many needs they have right now. Even though they are a top contending team, if they can add a top four defenseman and a top six forward, obviously easier said than done, I think this Rangers team could put themselves truly in that cup conversation for good. And there is still some glaring holes on that roster. Now with Capo Caco on, on IR, that right wing is especially one. Now the defensive side of things, I don't think is the biggest problem. I still think getting another top six forward would definitely be key. At the same time though, the defense hasn't exactly been spectacular over the past couple weeks and Igor Shcherkin has had to bail them out multiple times. Jacob Chikrin though, on the defensive side of things was pretty fantastic last season. And even though he's had a sharp decline this year, if he's put on that Rangers team and has given some more stability because of the other defensemen around him, I feel like Chikorin could be such a valuable piece of this Rangers team that could desperately use him. Now, the price and the trade package that Merrick was talking about was very interesting. Merrick said that the Rangers have submitted a trade offer to the Arizona Counties that included Vitaly Kratsov. We don't know anything else about that offer, but it does include Kratsov. And obviously, since it hasn't been accepted yet, that means that it's probably not enough for Arizona. But at the same time, it does feel like the Rangers are one of the teams out there, just like in the Jack Eichel situation, that are most in on him. Now, we're not quite done with the New York Rangers talk yet because Frank Cervelli had a very interesting couple of quotes on the radio these past couple of days that I found fascinating. And one of the things that he was talking about was trade targets for the New York Rangers, and he said this. They'd be looking for more than one forward, too. It's no secret that they are interested in a reunion with JT Miller. And then he goes on to say this. In terms of looking at some depth players as well, I think there have been some interest from the New York Rangers in someone like a Ryan Carpenter from the Chicago Blackhawks. And we also heard a little bit of that a couple months ago, I believe, surrounding Carpenter of the Rangers. I remember hearing Carpenter of the Rangers at some point, but Carpenter is a guy that defensively has been really strong this year, even though he's a little bit of an offensive black hole. Not really the player I think the Rangers need. I don't think they need any more bottom six players that are more on the defensive style. They did a pretty good job of getting those guys into this past offseason. To me, when it comes to the Rangers, the most, the highest priority should be getting an offensive top six right wing because at this point, that is the biggest hole on the forward group, and JT Miller does fix that. Now, having him back in New York would be pretty weird after he was one of the big pieces traded to start out this rebuild, but I feel like for the Rangers, if you have him on that right side, you finally have a bona fide player that can be relied upon day in and day out and provide a solid two-way game, as well as some great power play and even strength offensive play. It would cost a lot, that's for sure, but... If you're already in on Jacob Chikrin, you're pretty comfortable with trading first round picks, which the Rangers should be comfortable at doing at this point. Now, another couple of interesting quotes from Cervelli came from a potential viewpoint of Arturi Lekkinen to the New York Rangers, and Cervelli said this, Arturi Lekkinen is a guy in Montreal. Everybody has been focused on Ben Schrott and some others. Lekkinen might be the most in-demand Montreal Canadian at the moment. The number of teams that are lined up to get him. 
Then he goes on to say this. They think he's someone that plays and does almost everything in the game exceptionally well, except finish, which is ironic because he's finished. Great joke there, Frank. <laughs> and in the case, I think the Rangers are also one of those teams that will be interested in Lekkonen. So again, going back to that rumor of the Rangers potentially looking to add a bottom six player, Lekkonen would be a little bit of a different story, in my opinion, than Carpenter. He's a guy that, although, yes, the strongest part of his game is that defensive style, he's still a guy that brings some good speed and actually brings some pace of play to his game, which I think is really important for the Rangers on that bottom six. So I wouldn't really be too mad at bringing Lekkonen, but it seems like of how much interest he's getting, he probably costs a lot more than Carpenter. And I made a joke on Twitter about him costing a first round pick, but I don't think it would be even that far off. Maybe even a late second, third round pick would be what you need in a Lekkonen trade, which is still a lot for a guy that can't score like he does. Now, getting past this Rangers talk, I also want to mention a few other trade rumors around the league. There was one by Elliot Freeman as well on the 32 Thoughts podcast, which I thought was pretty interesting, surrounding the Avalanche and a potential fit with Claude Giroux. Now, we talked about Claude Giroux in the last rumor video about him and the potential fits he could have around the league. A lot of options, but Elliot Freeman alluded to potential Avalanche fit, and he said this, Colorado could use a right-hand shot. Who couldn't use Claude Giroux? The biggest challenge I have of that is can can you make the math work? If Claude Drew wants to go chase the Stanley Cup, that's a team you go to. One. And two, I see a fit there, which is very interesting. And then Jeff Merrick also uh, from Elliot NHL, NHL Watcher, Merrick throws out Joe Pavelski's name as well as a possible fit for the Avs. Now, as a Stars fan, even though we aren't out of the playoffs yet, if we're going to trade Joe Pavelski, do not trade him to the Avalanche. Please, dear goodness gracious. Please no. I mean, if that would be a great player for the Rangers to have. Joe Pavelski on the Rangers. Yes, please. Anybody but the Avs. Please. Don't have that happen to me. And then going on to the last trigger I want to talk about here surrounding Evander Kane. And again, coming from Elliot Freeman on the 32 Thoughts podcast, he mentioned Kane and what's going on with him right now. Obviously, since the last week, we got the confirmation or at least the reports that he was signing with the Edmonton Oilers. And then it was stalled because of the NHL's investigation into him. So we've kind of gotten a back and forth, let's say, on this situation. But Elliot Freeman said this. If he can play, I think it's probably Edmonton and Washington if Edmonton is in. So, Elliot Freeman is saying right now, if Edmund, if Evander Kane is going to play, the two teams that will likely sign him would be the Edmonton Oilers or the Washington Capitals. And the Capitals have been one team that's really in the past day emerged as a potential favorite in the Evander Kane sweepstakes. It's still most likely going to be the Oilers, but the Capitals could be a sneaky team, especially if Evander Kane doesn't want to deal with Canada. We'll see what happens, but... I feel like for Kane, this situation could get even more crazy over the next few days, but it feels like for the Caps, they could be on Kane, which is really weird to think about. But that is going to be it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry for, again, the uh, the abundance of trade rumor videos in the past couple weeks, but there's been a lot to talk about, and I've obviously been sorting everything with Sportsnet, and I want to say thank you to all this of, all the people that have commented in the last video, whether it be on the, on the, on the Twitter post or on, on the YouTube video. Thank you so much for all the support. I know I can't get to every single comment, but your your support was insane yesterday, and it really made my my year. It was incredible, and I can't wait to start there. It's going to be fantastic. Thank you so much for the support, everyone, and I love y'all. I love y'all so much. Thank you, Grab Gang. If you did enjoy this video, though, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you haven't already. Comment down below, what do you guys think about the trade rumors talked about today? Do you see Ben Sherratt? Where do you see him going? Where do you see Claude Giroux going? Where do you see Jacob Chikrin going? What do you see the trades looking like let me know all your thoughts make sure you share this video to anybody you guys know online any hockey fans you guys know online and click this card for all of my trade rumor content right on one playlist my name is nathan have a great day and i'll see you in the next one goodbye